ever before me Should I be in the heights of mountains Or in the heart of the sea You meet me where my feet will be Lord, you see everything of me Let me not Wander from the God who loves me And as you pursue me So will I pursue you Rain in my heart As you rain in all the earth Capture me in you Your voice gave birth to the light No planet unnamed, no star out of sight Your vision pierces through the blackest hole Still you see beyond my sins and know my soul The Lord, you see everything of me let me not wander from the God who loves me And as you pursue me, so will I pursue you
No more striving. I surrender to your love, Jesus. No more running. I will remain in you, you. No more striving.
Good day, everyone. Welcome to our online Sunday service. We are so glad that you are here with us today. We are Victory, and we are a church that exists to honor God and make disciples. Now, uh, by the way, I'm Lloyd. I'm one of the staff here at Victory. Now, we are speaking, speaking of honoring God and making disciples. We would like, like to invite each and every one of you to a Victory group or one-to-one. These are great ways for you to be, to be part of the church community and to grow with your walk in God. If you're not yet part of any Victory group or have not yet gone to any one-to-one, please um, see the contact numbers or scan the QR code displayed on the screen below. As a church community, we would love to pray for you and rejoice with your answered prayer as well. And if you do have any prayer requests or answered prayers, you may let us know through the following methods displayed on the screen. For the parents, don't forget that we have our online kids' church service every Sunday, 11 a.m. through our Facebook page, Victory Dumaguete. Also, kids ages 4 to 9 are welcome to join our Zoom Victory group every 2 p.m. These are great opportunity for your kids to grow in their walk with God. For the students as well, we have our, we have our youth service online every Friday, 7 p.m. at our Facebook page, Every Nation Campus Dumaguete. Don't forget to invite your friends, classmates, and even your teachers. Today, we also have our Mission Sunday. And as a global movement, our mandate is to reach every campus, every city, and every nation. It is, our, it is our heart to raise local leaders who are passionate to disciple and reach their campuses, communities, and nation. L- let's listen to the story of how our church in Kyrgyzstan was able to raise their very first full-time local staff. Hi, my name is Dan Karnashon and I am your missionary to Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan. Our church now is about 40 people. Most of our people are still young people. They are university and high school students. One of the challenges that we are facing right now in reaching the nation of Kyrgyzstan is the result of what happened because of the pandemic. Since last year up until today, all the universities and the schools are still closed. So as a team, we decided by realigning or refocusing our efforts in reaching the students in the campuses, we focus on the people that we have training and equipping our leaders in the church. So we have identified at least 11 to 12 leaders in our church that are ongoing and being trained right now in our Leadership 113 class. Hi everyone, I'm Aigrim and I'm from Pakistan. And uh, currently I'm working as a full-time staff in Every Nation Pakistan. When we go to high schools or campuses, there will find a lot of students uh, who actually like seeking now their purpose in life and those students who really need encounter God. Uh, we had the prayer and fasting in our church and I started really praying about it and asking God and he spoke to me uh, through his words in Isaiah 49 verse 6 where he said that he will make me light to other nations so that his salvation can reach the end of the earth. My vision for Kyrgyzstan is for each student here to really encounter God and not just encounter but really accept Him as their Lord and Savior in their lives. And I believe that through them, their whole families will come to know Jesus as well. So every ministry partner that is out there on behalf of the missions department, I would like to say thank you for giving sacrificially, especially the season of pandemic. And you know, because of your hard work, because of your generosity, all these things that are happening, specifically in our nation, wouldn't be that possible. We reach the nations to raise local leaders who will have the fire and passion to disciple their own nations for Jesus. We are so excited for what God is about to do in Central Asia through their very first local campus missionary. Thank you for your faithful generosity and prayers. Let's continue to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in every nation. Thank you for your generosity and for partnering with us as we reach the nations. Please continue to pray and believe with us as we raise local leaders and reach the the whole region of Central Asia for our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, every year, we have been dedicating the first weeks of January and July to prayer, fasting, and consecration. 
On July 6 to 8, we will come together as a church to seek God and persevere in prayer as we ask Him to continue to heal our land. Let's be in faith to encounter our great and awesome God who promises comfort and guidance at every step and ultimately bring complete restoration. He will do greater things for us in spite of everything we have been through. Now let's watch this video on how to prepare to fast. Every year as a church, we pray and fast at the start of the year and mid-year because we want to know God more, go deeper in the Word, and be in faith for what He will do in and through us. When we fast, we declare that we want God more than food by denying ourselves for a time. Remember, pray about the kind of fast you will undertake and commit to it ahead of time. Do not decide on a day-to-day -day basis. Ask God for grace. Together. Let's know God more and hear from Him during our prayer and fasting. You may access and download the devotionals through victory.org.ph slash fasting2021. We have prepared an English and a Filipino version as well as a family, devo family devotional which you can grow through with your young children. They are also available in the Victory app and also through the YouVersion app. With that, we are inviting everyone to join our mid-year prayer and fasting online on July 6 to 8, 7 p.m. on our official Facebook page, Victory Dumaguete. Let's continue to press into knowing God and believe for breakthroughs in our nation and our lives. May God meet us with His comfort, love, and guidance as we seek Him. And another great news is that for those who are done with one-to-one, -one, we are having another victory weekend for this year. Mark your calendars. That would be on July 10 and 11, 2021. Today is our last day of registration. To register, simply click the link on the caption. And uh, are there any engaged couples right now that you know of? We understand that this is one of the most exciting seasons of your lives. We would love to help you in this journey of faith and love through our marriage preparation seminar. Don't miss this opportunity to build and prepare for your marriage. To register and to know more, simply register through the link displayed on the screen or you may message us on our Facebook page, Victory Dumaguete. Now, lastly, last November, we have launched our very own Victory Dumaguete building project. In line with that, we will have a series of project presentation this July 17, 24, and 31. I mean, sorry, that's July 10, 17, 24, and 31. This will be every Saturday for the month of July at 10 a.m. via Zoom, where we will be introducing to you what we are doing and how you can be part of as a church community. To know more about this project and, you can, and how you can partner with us, you may contact the number displayed on the screen or you may message us on our Facebook page, Victory Dumaguete. It doesn't matter if you're a student, a young professional, a married couple, or even a senior citizen. Let's all take part of the venture of advancing God's kingdom through this project. Now, I know we're all excited to praise God today. Now, let me read to you Psalm 33, verses 1, 4, and 5. It says here, Shout for joy in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Verse 4, For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning, Lord God. Thank you because you are an up upright and just God, Lord God. All praise belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, church of soul. Praise God today. Oh, oh, we're giving you a praises. Oh, oh. We're living for your name, oh, oh. We're stepping out in faith, we pray for your will to be done. Come on, church, let's sing this. That is your name and you are able. You stay the same now and forever. You will never change. Giver, you open your hands, you a provider. You meet
meet every need, every desire by your unshakable word. We come to you now in trust, we pray. And oh, oh, we're giving you our praises. Oh, oh, we're living for your name. Oh, oh, we're stepping out in faith, we pray. For your will to be done. Whoa, whoa. Sing builder. Builder, what you have started, you will see through. On solid ground, we'll stand and break through. With hope that is firm and secure. Come to you now, in trust we pray. And oh, oh, we're giving you our praises. Oh, oh, we're living for your name. Oh, oh, we're stepping out of faith. We pray for your will to be done. We know that you have come before us. We have your promise to proclaim. We are stepping out of faith we pray for your will to be done whoa, whoa, whoa. and we will go we will follow you as we hold on to we hold on to you. Come on, sing this out. We will follow you as we hold on to. We hold on to you. We will go. We will follow you as we hold on to. We hold on to you, we will go, we will follow you as we hold on to, we hold on to you, and oh, oh, we're giving you a praises, oh, oh, we're living for your name, oh, oh, we're stepping out of faith, we pray. For your will to be done, oh, oh, we're giving you our praises, oh, oh, we're living for your name, oh, oh, we're stepping out of faith, we pray, for your will to be done, that you have come before us, we have your promise to proclaim, we are stepping out of faith, we pray. For you will to be done. Whoa. moments in my darkest hours you're the God who hears me when I'm crying out for help when my faith is shaken and I'm all struck down you're the God who sees me you're the God who saves And I will bless the Lord, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord, I 
I will bless the Lord at all times. In your lavish kindness, I've been washing grace. You're the God who loves me, can't keep it to myself. I'm gonna shout your story. I'm gonna sing your praise. You're the God who's mighty. You set my heart ablaze. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. Oh, sing it out. I will bless the Lord, I will bless the Lord at all times, and I will bless the Lord, I will bless the Lord at all times, and I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. And I can face the day, for you are strong to save. And I will bless the Lord at all times. And when you give and take, I'll stand on what you say, and I will bless the Lord at all times. Come on, church, sing this out. And I can face the day, for you are strong to save, and I will bless the Lord at all times. And when you give and take, I stand on what you say, and I will bless the Lord at all times. Oh, and I can face the day for you are strong to save, and I will bless the Lord at all times. I stand on what you say. And I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord. And I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord. And I will bless the Lord at all times. Lord, you are worthy to be praised. How majestic is your name, God. To you alone serve all the glory and all the honor. Lord, no matter where we are right now, God, Lord, as a church, Lord, may our hearts, may our mouths begin to sing praise to your name. 
as we sing the song, Lord, as we utter these words, God. May it be not empty words that we sing, Lord, but it will be the very cry of our heart that you are indeed worthy. You are worthy to be praised and bless your name. Lord, we worship you. in your hands yet you chose to be the one on the cross you created everything with your words yet you chose to be the one you chose to be the one you lie for all my king and savior you took the fall so we could live. Come on, we'll sing your life. Your life for all my King and Savior. You rose again and we believe that you deserve all and glory, everlasting glory. You alone are mighty, oh, you alone are worthy to be praised. And over all creation, we sing of your salvation. Glory to the King of heaven. Come on, we sing the cross. The cross display the love you have for all Inviting sons and daughters back into your home And every breath we breathe you provide And then you hold all things together You hold me forever you lie for all my King and Savior. You took the fall so we could live. Oh, Jesus. You lie for all my King and Savior. You rose again and we believe that you deserve all glory. Everlasting glory, oh, you alone are mighty, you alone are worthy to be praised. And over all creation, we sing of your salvation, glory to the King of heaven, glory, everlasting glory. For oh, you alone are mighty, you alone are worthy to be praised. Over all creation, we sing of your salvation. Glory to the King of heaven. And glory to the King of heaven. Almighty God, a faithful God, glory to the King, glory to the King, you are worthy to be praised, God. Oh, come all the voices we sing. We will follow you with everything that we have. And we will follow you. Oh, there is no turning back. And we will follow you with all our lives. We will sing and we will follow you. And we 
will follow you with everything that we have and we will follow you oh there is no turning back and we will follow you with all our lives we will sing and we will follow you we will follow and we will follow you with everything that we have we will follow you oh there is no turning back and we will follow you with all our lives we will sing and we will follow you And we will follow you. Oh, there is no turning back. And we will follow you. With all our lives we will sing. And we will follow you. And we will follow. And we will follow you. your salvation glory to the king of heaven and glory everlasting glory you alone are mighty you alone are worthy to be praised over all creation we sing of your salvation Glory to the King of Heaven. Lord, you are holy. Majestic is your name, O oh God. Lord, we worship you. Lord, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Lord, we worship you, Holy One. Your people, your children. Come and you do your throne of grace. And we surrender, Lord. Lord, we lift your name. We lift your name in this place. We glorify God. We glorify you. Amen and amen. Now, part of our worship as a congregation, as a church, is, to, is the giving back of our tithes and in thanksgiving our offering. If this is your first time joining us, you're more than welcome to give because we believe that God is going to honor you in your giving as well. Now, if you wish to give your tithes and offerings, you can do so through the following methods that we have displayed on the screen. First is you can drop them at the tithe, bo tithe boxes that's available at the office. We're op open from Mondays through Sundays, that's 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can also give through GCash or do an online banking, simply transferring funds to our Victory Dumaguetes BPI savings account. And lastly, you can also give through our website. That's www.victorydumaguete.org slash give. Now let me encourage you with these verses right here, taken from 2 Corinthians, that's chapter 9, verses 6 to 8. It says here, the point is, is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. Verse 8, And God is able to make all grace abound to you, 
so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every work. Now, I hope this encourages us simply because this promise is not just for a chosen few, but who, anyone could accept this promise as it's, uh, it's anybody's truth, and it's, uh, the promise is not, again, only for the few, but this prosper prosperity, this blessing is provided for to everyone. That is to everyone who gives with the heart that is to worship and honor our great God. Allow me to pray for each and every one of us. Lord, we thank you today, God. And we pray for that you continue to touch the heart of every believer, God, that, and to trust that in whatever that they give, God, they, are, uh, they are will be provided for by you, Father, God, by your glorious riches and by your will. Lord, we thank you, God, for each and every one today. We praise you. We glorify you. In your mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. All right. Okay. Thank you so much for that, Mav and Lloyd as well. And again, everyone, welcome once again to our online worship service. Okay. For those of you joining us for the first time, we are Victory and uh, Victory to Magetter, rather. Okay. And again, welcome once again for joining us today. Okay. So uh, as we've posted online yesterday as well, today we're kicking off a brand new series. Okay. We're starting something new today, and it's called He Who Promised. And the goal basically of this series is for us to understand how much of a promise promise keeper God is, how much of a provider, a blesser God is, and in doing so, we will realize that we can be a blessing to others as well. So we'll, we'll look at the book of Deuteronomy for this. Now, when you hear the word promises, okay, very quickly lang, what comes into your mind ba? Okay, so if you hear the word promises or promise, what's your mind in your mind? What's your mind in your mind? Okay, comment down below lang uh, sa mga answers in your mind. Perhaps for some of you, medyo mahugot in your answers, no? Marag, may mga bad experiences of, of promises, okay? Mga promise, promise or something. Well, today again, we'll take a look at how much of a promise keeper God is. And for our first installment today, okay, it's called A Charge to Obey. And we'll look at how obedience is closely tied to you know, experiencing God's faithfulness and promises as well. So if you have your Bibles with you, can you turn it to Deuteronomy chapter 8? Okay, uh, the book of Deuteronomy is, is one of the first five Bibles, okay? Uh, first, five, first five books in the Bible, rather. Okay, so Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1, 11... Uh, a chapter of verse 1 and 11 to 14. So, so we'll look at these verses. Now, for the sake of context as well, I'll, look, I'll read uh, verses 1 to 14, okay? All of it. Na lang. So, it says here, okay, Deuteronomy chapter 8, the whole commandment that I command you today, you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land, the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole day that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you, uh, let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers, that he might make you know the man that does not live on bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord." Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell these 40 years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciples, disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs flowing out in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron, and out of those hills you can dig copper, and you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Verse 11, take care lest you forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and his rules and his statutes, which I command you today. Lest, you, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built good houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks multiply and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, 
then your heart will be lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Let me just pray for us. Lord, thank you for the day, Lord. Uh, we are hearing your words once again, and we are about to learn your God. Uh, how much of a promise keeper you are, how much you're able to bless and, and provide for us. And as we look at the book of Deut Deuteronomy, Lord God, Lord, speak to our hearts and minds today as we learn to understand, Lord God, again, how, how much faithful you are, Lord God, to us. Lord, this we pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. So, once again, we're reading at the book of Deuteronomy. Now, perhaps for some of you, first time you magbasa ni ani a specific book of the Bible. So, a bit of context and background about this specific book. Now, the book of Deuteronomy is the fifth book of the Bible. All right, and it again the first few books of the Bible, the first five books, the Pentateuch. It focuses on God's relationship with Israel. Okay, Exodus talks about the Israelites being rescued from Egypt. Okay, and Numbers talks about the time where they're in the, they were in the wilderness, their journey from Egypt to the promised land. And uh, the Leviticus talks about the laws, basically, that they have to follow. So the first five books, again, talks about God's relationship with Israel. Now, this book, Deuteronomy, also includes, basically, you know, it's a collection, basically, of speeches or sermons from Moses. And he's telling them to the Israelites. And he's doing so because at the end of this book, he will die. Para siyang last few words ni Moses. So what he has to say to the Israelites is very, very important. Now, you can basically look at uh, Deuteronomy in these parts. Okay, The first few chapters, chapters 1 to 4, uh, talks about the historical background. Okay, A quick recap or context of what has happened to the Israelites. Okay, their time in the wilderness, how God has helped them, uh, victory over certain battles, those things. So, medyo mga catch up ka. Because again, this is the fifth book okay, of, of the first five books. So, mga gabasa o fifth installment of a book series. Now, in the second part, it talks about the covenant stipulations. Moses, once again, okay, uh, reiterates on mga laws, commandments, he follows Israelites so they can receive as well the blessings that God has promised them. So that occupies a big chunk of the book. That's chapters 4 to chapters 26. And in the last few chapters, it talks about final blessings and exhortation in Moses, including okay, his death. So our focus today, and in fact, the entire series is on Deuteronomy chapter 8. Okay, meaning it's on that part that talks about the covenant stipulations, Moses' instructions to the Israelites as well. Now it says here in verse 1 of, of Deuteronomy chapter 8, the whole commandment that I command you today, you shall be careful to do. Okay, now first of all, that statement, the whole commandment, it doesn't just refer to one part or one instruction or one commandment lang. Okay, but in, in some translations as well, it refers to all the commandments, all the instructions that God gave to the, to the Israelites through Moses. So again, every command, all the commandments he instructed Moses, he says, you sh you, uh, you, uh, that, you, that, that I give you today, you shall be careful to do. Okay, he says, na, he, Moses tells them that you should do these things. Now he says that you shall be careful to do. That word there, careful, ang Hebrew word ana is shamar, it means to keep watch, observe, or be guarded. Okay, so parang parang make sure naka, nakalantaw ka, you, you, you don't stray away from it. So he's putting much emphasis here that you should or you must do this, the commands that I'm giving you. And this word, shamar, okay, ang careful, ang word careful, okay, it is used 65 times all over Deuteronomy and always, uh, always in relation to obeying God's commandments. In other words, when you, hear, when you see this word, okay, it, it is connected to obeying a command ni God or all the, of, of God's commandments. And always in the context na it's because the Lord has saved them from Egypt. Again, if you remember, if you're, if you're not familiar with the story of the Israelites, at one point in their lives, they were slaves in Egypt. Okay, sa mga familiar sa story ni Moses, di ba? every Holy Week, di ba, kita ta ng story ni Moses, rescue niyang Israelites. God called Moses to do so. At one point, the Israelites, sila as a people, they were slaves to the nation of Egypt. But God rescued them through Moses. God brought them out of Egypt. They experienced many miracles. That they crossed the Red Sea, manna, or they, or, and quail every day, provided for sila sa wilderness. The, and many other blessings and miracles by God. Okay? Moses is basically telling them, be careful, Take care, make sure that you're, you're, you're uh, uh, being obedient to God because again, He has saved you from Egypt. He has rescued you. He has brought you out of Egypt. He has been faithful to you. Okay? In other words, okay, okay, they are to have careful obedience okay, that was expected of them in response to the fact that God was full of care towards them. Okay? He brought them out of Egypt. Okay? Again, again, through the wilderness. Careful of... 
God called Israel to complete obedience and disobedience was to be based on remembering what the Lord had done among them in the wilderness. Now, as, I, as I'm going through this as well, okay, take a moment to remember as well, what is what ni God in your lives? As we talk about Him being a promise keeper, being a provider, okay, being a God who is able to richly provide and bless us, perhaps there were times in our lives that we were doubting, Lord, maka bless ba ka? Lord are, will you come through? Ba? Think about those times. Remember those times God was able to provide for you, able to bless you even more or beyond what you, what you, that you thought of. Okay, think about those times. Moses is saying this to them as well. Be careful to obey God because he has done many great things uh, for you. And it is further reinforced in verse 6. Okay, when it says here, So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. So if, we were, if you were to ask, or if the Israelites were to ask, Okay, Moses, how do we obey God? And it says there, by walking in his ways. Okay, by making sure they follow, they follow the commandments. Nila. And it says here, by fearing him. So this talks about you know, the disposition, how they are to do so. Because you can, you know, do a commandment, but you know, your attitude is okay? have, have you ever been instructed sa parents ninyo at one point nga, Nak, okay, pakipalit ito sa, sa tindahan. You, know, you, you were instructed to buy something. Pero reluctant ka. Now, like, ah, like, dabug, dabug pa ka. You didn't want to do it. Ah, mak, samok ma. But you still do it, pero you were reluctant. You didn't want to do it. Here, Moses says, you walk in his ways and fearing him. Now, fearing here doesn't mean nga parang horror, nga fear, okay? But it means with reverence. Meaning, when Moses says, keep his commandments, follow, uh, obey him, it is with reverence. Not out, not out of reluctance or compulsion or parang annoyance or parang, uh, kanang, ah, di ko ganan, Lord, but kinan mo Moses. No, but it says here, with fearing him, with reverence to God, they are to walk in his ways. They are to obey his commandments. And why? Okay, we might ask, one of man gina ingon sila ni Moses, obey his commandments. Make sure to carefully do this. When you go back to verse 1, you will see basically parang a cause and effect. It says here, like going back to verse 1, uh, the command that I give you today, you shall be careful to do. Why? Because that, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord your, your God swore to give to your fathers. Okay? That they would live and multiply and possess the land. I mean, there is, there's a promise God gave to them specifically. And he told them, the command that I give you today, be sure to do it, okay, so that you will possess this land, so that you will uh, experience blessing and provisions. This is what God told them. And in that last part of the verse, it says here that the, the Lord God swore this to their, to their fathers. Meaning, this promise God has for them has been in a long time coming. Niya. Dugayin promise ni God, and now they're about to experience it. Now they're about to have it. Okay, this promised land, remember, they've been, they were taken out of Egypt. They were, go, they were on a journey to the wilderness. Now they're about to go to the promised land. They're about to experience it. They're about to have it. And this promise was promised not just to them, but specifically first to their forefathers. Pa lang. And now they are about to have that promise. So for us to all the more appreciate this promise God had for them, and for us to all the more appreciate how much of a promise keeper God is, we need to look back, okay, basically at the founder, not, not the founder or the forefather of the Israelite nation, to realize nga, nga, you know, many years in the making of the promise to God for them, for, for, for the Israelite nation. To do that, let's go back to the, to the time of Abraham. Okay, see, Abraham, ang forefathers of Israelites, okay? Now, what happened in the life of Abraham is that at one point in his life, God called him to move from his hometown to go to a certain place. And God, later on, would make a covenant with Abraham. In chapter 15, verse 18 to 20, it says here, On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. His name back then was Abraham, but saying to your offspring, I give this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, of, uh, the, great river the river Euphrates, the land of the Kenites, Kenizzites, Kadmonites, Hittites, Perizzites, Taming Matites, okay, the Rephaim, the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Girgashites, and the Jebusites. Okay, so God made this covenant with Abraham. Now, this is important for us to, to learn and understand. Unsa ba covenant? Because this also affects the Israelite people. Okay, unsa ba covenant ba? Which we will be talking about a lot. Okay, in this installment and even in the other installments. A covenant basically is a promise between two or more parties to perform certain actions, and it's very and it's taken very seriously. Okay, um, nowadays, modern times, okay, when we when two parties would make an agreement with each other, nga serious ilang pagtake ana, they would make a contract. Right? They would write things down. 
But back then, ancient times, they would make a covenant with one another. Okay, nowadays, uh, the most uh, close to a covenant is like marriage or adoption, okay? In, in back then, in ancient times, when people would seal off these covenants, or meaning to like, ratify, or make sure, nga, okay, in place a covenant, what they would do is that they would have animals cut in halves, and both parties would walk between these dead animals, saying that if they are not faithful to the covenant, what's done to the animals can be done to them. Which, which again, what happened to the animals? Namatay. Okay, but it's like they're declaring curses upon them if they are not faithful to the covenant. That's how much serious they, they, they took the covenant. Gabi sa serious with, with the covenants. Now, God made a covenant with Abraham. In verses 17 to 18, it says here, When the sun had gone down, it was dark. Behold, uh, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. And on that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. Okay, and what was his promise to Abraham? His covenant, a promise of a son, and a promise of land, a promise of place to stay. Now, where was Abraham ba? Okay, asa was Abraham at this time? Uh, important thing to take note lang. Abraham, in chapter 15, uh, verse 12, says here, as the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell on Abraham. So it's Abraham, what actually passed through. It was God lang who passed through and made this covenant. Siya lang nag, kung sa contract pa lang na, siya lang nagpirma dito sa kontrata with Abraham. It goes to show his commitment that he would be faithful to this promise. That he would promise Abraham a son and land. He would promise him children and land. Now in, now in chapter 17, okay, he step up on God ng covenant niya, kang Abraham. These are several years after his initial covenant with Abraham. Now in chapter 17, verse 48, God says, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. Before it was just, you will have a son. Or, or you will be a great nation. Now, it says here, you will be the father of a multitude of nations, Abraham. No longer shall your name be called Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make you into nations. Kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant. Now, it's important to take note that at this time, Abraham was still childless. So imagine Abraham, childless, and he's about in his 90s, okay? I think it was at 99 years old at this time. And God told him, you will be a father to a multitude of nations. Okay, imagine Abraham, what, what, what would he would think at this time? And you know, God says, I, I will do this for you. Okay? And I will give you, a la uh, you and your offspring after you the land of your sojournings. And all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. So if you were to look at this second okay, version, basically, of God's covenant with Abraham, mas grabe pang promises niya. A land to stay, they will be, they will be exceedingly fruitful, kings will be descended from him, everlasting covenant, and God will be the God of Abraham's people. Okay? So grabe ang covenant niya kang, kang Abraham. And to cut the long story short with that, yeah, God made it possible for Abraham to have children. Okay, with Sarah, his wife, okay, nga 90 years old na. So mga lulog lolo na sila Abraham, and yet they were still able to have a, a child, si Isaac. And through Isaac, okay, the, the, si Isaac, nagkanak po siya, na si, si, si Esau and si Jacob. And through Jacob, that covenant continued. And further on to his sons as well, okay, si, si Joseph, and later on to other sons ni si Joseph. This covenant continued to the descendants of Abraham and in the, until in Exodus chapter 19, verses 3 to 6, when they were in the Mount Sinai, when the Israelites were there, okay, in verse 3 it says there, Moses went up to God, the Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell people of Israel, you yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians. So again, Bagroslan Gereskyuani from Egypt. And how I bore you in eagle's wings and brought you, to, brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. There are, these are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. So God made this covenant with the nation of Israel. This is, this is the Mosaic covenant basically. Now, what's important in this covenant, unlike the previous covenants, because Abraham at first, was and the second time, all God told him was to circumcise every male in his household. This one, man, my instructions see God for the Israelites. Okay? My, my, my basis, my core, and covenant niya with the nation of Israel, with the people of Israel. And that is the law. Okay? That, that they needed to follow. God's commandments for Israelites. 
it's important to understand again that the, the Mosaic Covenant differs from the previous covenants. The Mosaic Covenant was centered around God's, God's giving His divine law to Moses on Mount Sinai. Not just the Ten Commandments, okay? When we, we, we think of God's commandments, ang Ten Commandments first, matwink nato. But this talks about the entirety of the Jewish law, the 600 plus laws that God gave to the Israelites through Moses, okay? Israel was to be God's light to the dark around them. They were to be a separate and called out nation that everyone around them would know that they worship God, the covenant keeping God. Okay? And this is why God told them to obey his commandments because God wants his people to obey so they may enjoy the blessings of his covenant. Okay? Meaning, but covenant, two parties. For God, he promised. Abraham, he, sw- he promised to the, 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 the forefathers of the Israelite people that he would bless them abundantly. Right? They would have this land. Kings would come from them. Uh, there would be a multitude of nations. They would be exceedingly fruitful. Grab your promise to God. But on the other end, man, for the Israelites, they had something to, uh, to do as well on their end. And that is to follow the law, to keep God's commandments. And again, God wants them to, to keep these commandments so that they would also enjoy the blessings that comes from the covenant. We see here basically from the story of Abraham down to the Israelites. Okay, if you would trace back the story of Abraham, ni Isaac, ni Jacob, the Israelites, you would see God showing his faithfulness through the covenant. Through his covenant with this people, with this family of Abraham, you would see the highlight ani is God and his faithfulness towards them. Even though many times, see, see Abraham, he failed God, uh, and Israelites as well, they failed God. God continued to, to uphold his covenant with the Israelite people. In other words, through the covenant, we, we see how, how much of a promise keeper, how faithful see God. Now he's about to fulfill his promise, the, the uh, first giswear niya, kang, kang Abraham. Now he's about to fulfill that as well to the, to the, to the Israelite people. God never uh, goes back against his word. Okay. Unlike kita, unlike kita, mga people, mga humans, at one point in our lives, at, at one point in our lives, we've all broken promises. See, God never breaks His promises. In, in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 11 to 14, Moses then says, Take care, lest you forget the Lord your God by not keeping His commandments and His rules and His statutes, which I command you today. Now, there's that word again, care. Okay, meaning, be sure to be watchful about this. Be sure to observe or to be guarded about this. What's that? Yeah. Take care, lest you forget the Lord your God. Be sure na din mo malimtan si God, niyon si Moses. Okay? By, and how do you forget God? How do you, you know, uh, na malimtan mo si God sa life? He says here, by not keeping His commandments, His rules, and His statutes, which I command you. Right? Here, Moses has a warning to the Israelites, okay? meaning they will forget God if, if they stop obeying his commandments. And not my specific context, but if they stop obeying his commandments, when, okay, when what happens? When you, it says here, when you have eaten and are full and have built good houses and live in them. When your herds and flocks multiply and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart will be lifted up and you forget the Lord your God. Moses warns the, the people here, be sure to obey God, to keep his commandments, especially in times of abundance and provision, of plenty, of prosperity. It says, be sure to obey God. And, it, and, and, and it's important to take note here, these verses, it doesn't say, if you have eaten and are full. It doesn't say, if you have your, your, your flux multiply, or if your silver and gold, uh, gold are multiplied, okay, ma, ma, ma forget you, God. No, it says here, when... Okay? When you have eaten and are full, when your herds and flocks multiply, when your silver and gold is multiplied. In other words, there is a promise for prosperity and provision for the Israelites. Okay? As part of God's covenant uh, for them, God promised that they will be exceedingly fruitful. When they go there to the promised land. And Moses warns them, when you experience these things, be sure basically to keep his commandments. Because if you don't, you will forget God. So the warning of Moses done. Here we see the dangers basically of abundance and prosperity. Now I'm not saying that you know evil ang maga prosperous per se. I'm not saying a wrong maga wealth per se. But what's important to take note here is our attitudes. When we get when we become prosperous, when we experience wealth, when God blesses us, when we experience you know uh, our answered prayers, financial breakthroughs, unsa ba attitude na to anak? Okay, uh, how how do we react to that? 
Because sometimes, or a lot of times, okay, we have this in case of emergency mindset towards God. Diba? When, we, when, when it's easy for us to seek God, to pray to God, to try and obey God as much as we can, when we need something from God. When we're desperate, like, Lord, asa mga Lord, pray ka ni God, bali ni mong pray, read the Bible, and all those things. But when everything is okay, when you're provided for, when you're blessed, okay, it's easy for us to forget God. Just like the Israelites, okay, gina warning nga sa daan ni Moses. Have you ever noticed that? When things are okay, sometimes, or a lot of times, the, the, the truth is, we forget God. And we should be careful of that. We must remember God at all times, especially in times of abundance. For it is easy to forget our need for God in times of plenty. We must be careful and watchful na, we, na wala ito lalimutan si God. We should be mindful of that. Moses warns the Israelites this, take care lest you forget God. In, in, in verse 14, okay, in, in the NLT version, even, it even says there, do not become proud okay, at that time okay, when you experience these blessings and forget the Lord your God who rescued you from slavery in the land of Egypt. Meaning, don't forget that you know, it is God who made all of things possible. In other words, when we experience blessings, uh, prosperity, we might think na, ah, tungod ni na ako. Tungod ni sa akong gibuhat. I, um, I worked hard. I made this all possible. This is me and my doing. This is my money. This is my wealth. I made this all possible. Forgetting in the first place that it was God who made all of this possible. It is God who provided for us. It is God who, who enables us to produce wealth. It is God who's, who's richly blessed us. The same thing with the Israelites. Moses is reminding them, don't forget it's, it's the Lord God who rescued you from the land of Egypt. If God did not do that, if God did not rescue them from Egypt, they would still be slaves in Egypt. They would not be fruitful. They would not, you know, their, their flocks, their herds would not multiply. Their gold and silver would not multiply. They would still be slaves in Egypt. So Moses is telling them, do not forget God. Remember God. And again, what is a surefire way for us to remember God and not forget about Him? By keeping His commandments, all right? By making sure to obey what he, has, uh, what he has told us to do. Same ang giingon niya sa Israelites. When we look at back this chapter, okay, we see the call to Israelites, uh, the call to the Israelites to obey God and His commandments so that they won't forget that He is faithful to keep His promises and that He is the source of their blessings, provision, and prosperity. So God makes it all possible. Dili sila lang. They're about to experience the blessings and they should not forget that it is God who makes this possible. Now, when you go to the tail end of Deuteronomy, okay, uh, sa, 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 chap, sa, sa book, okay, it's important to take, to take note of this. You'd see what happens afterwards, okay? Uh, or, or also by my last few words in Moses, sa, sa Israelites, because again, he's about to die as well. In chapter 19, Moses basically gives this choice to the Israelites. Uh, chapter 30, pala, verse 19. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live. Moses says, basically, here you have two options, Israelites. Choose life or death. Choose God or not. If you choose this one, you will see experience blessings. If you choose the other one, curses. Ang yun niya kang, ang, ang yun ni Moses sa, sa Israelites, I, I plead you, choose life, okay? Choose blessings. Choose to God. But in, verse 13, in chapter 31, verse 29, Moses says this naman. Okay? For I know that after my death, you will surely act corruptly and turn aside from the way that I have commanded you. And the days to come, evil will befall you because you will do what is evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger through the work of your hands. Meaning Moses says, no, plead that choose life, but Moses says, kabulo ko ninyo, kaila ko ninyo. 40 years ko galid ninyo. I know your, your inclinations. I know what you're prone to do. Right? And, and Moses tells them that you will surely act corruptly. He knows that try as they might, these Israelites, there's something fundamentally wrong with them. Okay? And of course, Apilash Anna. And Deuteronomy chapter 29, 29, verse 4, tells us this. It says here, But to this day, Moses says, The Lord has not given you a heart to understand, or eyes to see, or ears to hear. I mean, there's something wrong with the Israelites. Their hearts need to be replaced. They need to have the right kind of heart. Because on their own, their heart, they cannot fully and perfectly obey God. They can't fully and perfectly follow the law. All those 600 plus laws, they can't fully follow nila. Okay, so meaning, so same sa atua, okay? As you're hearing about this, you might think, okay, obey ni God, obey ni God. But we can't just do so on our own will, on our own strengths. But for us, for the longest time, diba, magtingtana, okay, Lord, ako nang buhaton, para ako blessing. 
para makuha na ako answered prayer na ako, Lord, bato na ako na, bato na ako na. But we can't fully or you know, obey God with our own strengths lang. Because there's something fundamentally wrong with us as well, and that is our sinful nature. Same with the Israelites. There was something wrong with them. And, if you, and in fact, if you read through Genesis to Deuteronomy, and even after that, okay, sa mga time of the prophets, uh, even uh, sa mga time of David, you'd see a certain cycle. God would give laws to uh, the Israelites. They would break it, okay, and then they would uh, repent, okay, and then God would give them more laws, and then you know, they would break it again, okay. So there's a cycle of rebellion yung ginabuhat sa Israelites. But the good thing in this book, of the, the book of Deuteronomy, is that it doesn't all end in, on a bad note or on a sad note. There is a promise of hope, basically. Okay, naigi allude to ang, ang Deuteronomy. There's a promise that God would do something to deal with the corrupt hearts of the people. And this is good news for us as well. Uh, it says here in, in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6, And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your offspring so that you will love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, uh, that you may live. In other words, this here is a promise that God is going to do something to the hearts of His people. Okay, the the word the, the term there, circumcised your heart. It, it talks about the putting off of the old self. Okay, that that they, that they would become a new creation basically. And this same train of thought is picked up by the prophets like Jeremiah and Ezekiel. Jeremiah thirty one. Okay, very explicitly even says that there will be a new covenant. Come before. Covenant with Abraham, covenant with Israelites. Now they have this new. Uh, they will have this new covenant. Covenant, all right. In verse, in chapter thirty-one, verse thirty-three, God, uh, Jeremiah says rather, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, declares the Lord, I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So there was the promise of a new covenant, a new sacred agreement basically with God. Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 19 says, and I will give them one heart uh, or a new heart and a new spirit I will put within them and I will remove the heart of stone from them uh, from, from, from them and, and from them their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. Okay, so meaning God will change the hearts of his people. There was this promise of a new covenant. Now, quick question is, what does this all mean for us today? Because as, you, as you've been reading throughout these verses, can you promises to God so far? Okay, Mosaic Covenant, ang laws, these were for the Israelites. Now, none of us here, or, or if, you're, if you're a Filipino, okay, you're like a Jewish person. Okay, so ang Mosaic laws, ang Mosaic Covenant, that's not for us. But so my point, Annie, for us, what does this mean for us? Ba? The good news here for us is that there was a promise of a new covenant. The old covenant, that was for the Israelites. But the new covenant, though it was first for the, for the house of Israel, na include na po ang mga non-Jewish people. So meaning for us here today, for us who are believers, okay? Part ta sa new covenant. This is the good news, okay? It says here, uh, that the, 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 according to the new, new Testament Gospels and letters, the new covenant was was made possible or ratified through Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross. Matthew 26, verse 28 says, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus' death on the cross made it possible for the new covenant to take place, basically. Jesus, see, Jesus is mediator of the new covenant. His death is the basis of the promise. Okay, Hebrews 8, verse 6 even says, But as it is, Christ has obtained a ministry that is as much more excellent than the old as the covenant he mediates is better since it is enacted on better promises pa. And verse 7 says, for, for if that first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no occasion to look for a second. So let me just quickly compare these two covenants. Okay, an old covenant, it's for the Israelites. Okay, as you see, as you see in, in chapters 15 to 17, uh, perfect obedience to the law was required. Uh, for blessing, salvation, and forgiveness of sins. Okay, kailangan buato nila ni para ma bless sila. Animal sacrifices were reg regularly used, okay, uh, again, for, for their worship or for them to receive forgiveness. But sa new covenant, okay, forever believes in Christ. Para ni sa whoever would believe in Christ, ang new covenant, salvation, forgiveness of sins, all other spiritual blessings, or all, all other blessings rather, is received by grace through faith in Christ. Jesus was the final sacrifice needed as well okay, in Hebrews 10. Meaning, grabe ang new covenant. Grabe ang blessings makuha nato sa, sa new covenant. 
Grabe ang promises ni God. And again, all of this is made possible through Christ. Unlike the old covenant, we're in the, when, when the, the, the Jewish people, okay, they needed to do something to attain the old covenant. To, they need to follow all these laws, all these things, but they could not do so perfectly. Okay? Ang new covenant, it's made possible through Christ. And we are not recipients. If you're a believer, okay, you are a Christian, you're, 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 you're following Jesus, guess what? You are a recipient of this new covenant. Grab, you know, we are recipients of, God's, of, of, of this covenant made by Jesus or made possible by Jesus. So what do we do now? Okay, next question. Knowing that we are partakers of this covenant, knowing that we are recipients of this, what should we do now? now if, you were, if you were to look back at what Moses did, or what Moses told the Israelites, he says "Now God has been faithful to you, mga Israelites. He has been faithful to you over these years, even though we, we, we were in the wilderness, he has rescued us, okay? You have, you have been rescued from Egypt, taken care in the wilderness, won battles, seen miracles, and he will bless us pa when we, we go to the land. And then Moses says, therefore, obey him. He charged the Israelites to obey, to, to obey God. For obedience is the response of love. Parang, if the Israelites truly knew how much God loved them, and if they truly loved God, they will obey. But the same way, nakita, kung if we love our parents, well, we will obey our parents. Likewise, under Christ, Okay, the better Moses. God ultimately expressed his care for his people by bringing us out of something far worse than Egypt. God rescued the Israelites from, from slavery in Egypt, but God rescued us from something far worse than being slaves in Egypt, and that is from being slaves to our sin. Without God, we would, be, we would experience condemnation because of our sins. We receive the full punishment because of our sins. We'll experience the divine holy wrath of God, which is just because of our sins. And God rescued us from that. From sin and death, God rescued us. How? By, sparing, by, by not sparing His one and only Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. On our own, we could not save ourselves. On our own, we cannot do anything to, you know, to rescue ourselves. It took God, our Savior, to save us. It took Jesus rather, our Savior, to save us. Which is why an appropriate response to all of these things is, is likewise to obey Christ, to obey God still. Kung saan obey na to, we might not need to obey all of, of the 600 plus laws because some of them were civic laws, ritual laws, which is no, no longer applicable to us. But we can still obey God. John 14 verse 15, Jesus says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Okay? If we love Jesus, we don't just talk about Jesus. Okay? We don't just tweet, uh, post on Facebook or in Twitter. We don't just, we don't just post verses. Okay? Uh, we, we don't just uh, listen to topics, podcasts, read books. Those are, those are good things. Those are important things. But we don't just wear clothes and Jesus is nakabutang diha. Okay? Or listen to music about Jesus. But we must obey His commandments. Now, what are some of, the, some of these things that we can obey? Matthew 22, verse 36 to 40. It says here, Teacher, someone was asking, which, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. One of these two, two command, on these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Of the things from the Old Testament that is carried over to the, to the New Testament or the New Covenant, because Testament is also covenant, the Ten Commandments and these two commandments are carried over. Okay? To love the Lord, okay, love the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. And to love our neighbor as ourselves. The word love there, okay, that doesn't just mean emotional or feelings lang. But it's a whole heart, wholehearted devotion or decision to love someone with all our heart, soul, and mind. And it says here we are to do so towards God. Now again, the only way we're able to do that, again, it's not by our own strengths or will, because again, on our own, sinful nature na nato, but we're able to do so because our hearts have been renewed through Christ's death on the cross. Because we are now a new creation by what Christ did for us. Okay? Na put off na ang old self nato, na circumcised ng hearts nato. Our old self has been put off. Now we're a new self, a new, a new creation nata. Now we're able to love God. We're able to obey Him, follow Him. 
we're able to love Him, not just as, uh, we're able to love Him because as well in first John chapter 1, verse 12, it says there na, to those who uh, who believe in Christ, okay, or to those who received Him, it says there, He gave them the right to become sons or children of God. So can you imagine this? God is not just our our master, our king, our Lord, though He is all of those things, of course, but He's also our heavenly Father. The difference between us and the old covenant that, is a, is a, that the Israelites have is that our covenant with God is that He is our heavenly Father as well. We have this relationship with God. Our broken relationship with God was restored because of what Christ did for us. Therefore, we, we are drawn near to God. We are His children now. We are, we are, we are able to love Him because we have been renewed by Christ. And that is why we can obey Christ. Again, just like the Israelites, okay, the one simple thing is that we are charged to obey. Obey Christ. Obey Jesus. Not in a way na parang gipugos ka, parang servant lang, or other compulsion, or out of duty, but obey Christ out of love. Obey Christ as a, resp- as a response to how much He loves us. And as we do so, okay, as we do so, it is with knowing that He, God, okay, provides for us, that He's able to, no, bless us because if kaya niya it provide ang one only son to assure us of our eternity and how much more the other things of this world kung kaya ni God i-assure atong eternity that no one else can provide for us how much more the other things of this world that's how much of a blesser a promise keeper a provider God is for us let me just pray for us church Lord thank you for today that we get to realize how faithful how much of a, how much of a promise keeper you are as we look back at the story of Abraham and his family, we would see, Lord, you are faithful. You, you are able to, you are faithful to your covenants, to your promises. You don't go back on your word. We see the guy in, in the story, God, that Lord, how much you were able to richly bless, provide for them. And Lord, likewise, for us here today, who are part of the new covenant, or who are your children, you're reminding us today, Lord God, that we, we have a Heavenly Father. We have someone we can run to, we can pray to, not just in times of need, but in all times, even when everything's okay, we can run to you, we can pray to you. And we have that assurance that you, that, that you will provide and bless. Not always in the way that, that, that we think, not always in the way that we want, but Lord God, even better, you know exactly the right timing, the, the right way to, to bless us. You know the things that we want or need. You know what, what, we, what, you know, you know what we will even pray for. You know all these things, Lord. And you, you, you do not turn away, Lord God. You're not oblivious, ignorant towards these things. You are aware and Lord God, you're able and willing to provide for us. I want to pray for some of us here today while we're in an attitude of prayer. If you're here today, and you're experiencing all of these uh, financial difficulties, perhaps for, for some of you, uh, you're in need of a job, or you're believing for promotion, or perhaps you have a business and it, is, it has been rough. You know, MECQ happened, the pandemic happened, you know, Lisud mag, uh, mag business. If that's you right now, I want to pray for you. Lord, I pray for all those people looking for work, believing for work, believing, believing for promotion, or maayo ilang business nila. Lord, I pray for financial breakthroughs for God. Lord, I pray that uh, for divine appointments. Uh, I, I pray that whatever they're going to search for trabajo, there will be an opening, Lord God. They would get hired. I pray for provision to, to be upon them in a household. I've been praying for those believing for promotion. Their bosses would see how much uh, hard work they, they, they were and they will be, be promoted, Lord God, to those kind of businesses, Lord God. I pray that, Lord, they, they would choose to to trust in your faithfulness and not cut corners with God. And, and, and Lord, trust that you will prosper them even in the midst of this difficult season, Lord God. They would see that, Lord, kaya kaya bless nila, Lord God. They would see that, kaya, 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 kaya nimo i-bless still ang business nila, Lord God. Even pray for those who have debts right now. Uh, with all that's happened to us, if you're praying for a cancellation of debt, for provision to pay off your debt as well, Lord, I pray for provision for these things. If you're a student or you're a parent with students, if you're believing for tuition, okay, I mean, to pay for your tuitions rather, okay? If you're believing to pay for all of these things, whatever, mga fees sa school, or para maka-enroll ang anak ninyo this coming semester, Lord, I pray for, for these parents or for these students who are believing na maka uh, for those believing for scholarships perhaps, or for full payment, bayaran ang previous sem, or whatever things, bayaran pa, as a dorm, or, 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 or whatever, mga fees, 
Lord, I pray that they, they, they would receive the provision that they need to be able to still continue their studies. To the parents, Lord God, who are believing, Lord God, that Lord, their kids can go to school this coming semester. Lord, I pray as well that they will see your, your, your hand provide for them, that their kids will still be able to continue their studies. And Lord God, to those who are believing for medical uh, provision, for medical expenses, um, sa mga, na mga relatives or sila mismo nagkasakit na hospital, uh, provision for medication, sa mga medicine, um, whatever kilangan, uh, me, uh, medical related. Uh, Lord, I pray for these people as well. Uh, Lord, it is no joke to get sick at this season, Lord God, especially if COVID, Lord. Uh, Lord, I pray for your people, Lord God. Lord, they would see your, your miraculous provision. That Lord, they would see, Lord, Lord, may pay off ang kilangan sa hospital, ang medication nga kilangan for weeks ba or months, they would see provided for sila, that they would be able to regularly take those meds nga kilangan. Uh, to those who God nga, again, whatever expenses kilangan, Lord, they will not be hindered to get medical help or to seek medical help because, Lord, you will richly provide for them. Lord, we claim all of these things, Lord God. We, we, we pray for all of this provision to be upon your people, Lord God. Not just in this season, not just right now, like a pandemic, but Lord, even after for this word, we pray and claim that your people would see your faithfulness in their lives. They will trust you in their faithfulness. They will not doubt. They will not turn to the left or to the right, Lord God. They would fix their eyes on you, the promise keeper, he who promised. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right. Thank you so much, Tom. And indeed, our God is faithful. And we agree to each and every prayer that Tom has spoken a while ago. But before you go, guys, and before we end, you all know that we are having our Victory Dumaguete building project right now. To, to, for us to be all the more encouraged and for us to see the updates, let's all watch this video. <laughs> Wow, what a great day, great weather, great music, and great friends. <laughs> but before all that, let me show you a quick update of our Vicky Tumagade building project for the month of June. That area right there will be the future spot for our one-to-ones and victory groups. Can you just imagine the fun and excitement? It's been three months since we started the construction of our church building. The backfilling is now 75% complete, so with just a little bit more, we'll be fully done. The building's firewall has already reached the height of the second flooring. The firewall is a fire-resistant structure that is placed usually at the rear and the sides of the property line to restrict the spread of fire. Now since we're going all the way up, we're already constructing the beams that support the second floor slab and we're already 40% done. Sharing these things makes me so excited for the future of our church building. Just imagine the relationships, the friendships that can be started because of this church building. All of these are made possible because of the people who have held the ropes for us, those who have partnered and supported us, and those who believe in the vision of what we want to accomplish in this city. And with that, we'd like to invite you to take part in what God is doing in our city. With your help, we can build a place where people can jumpstart their discipleship journey. Because here, we believe that discipleship is relationship. Should you wish to partner with us on whatever capacity God is impressing on you, you can simply message us on our Facebook page, Vicky Dumaguete, or go check us out on our website, vickydumaguete.org. Please continue to pray for us as we complete the construction of our church building in the midst of this pandemic. We'd like to thank you for your generosity and for your support, and for all the years that you have co-labored with us in forcefully advancing God's kingdom in this city. May God bless you, and may you and your family stay safe.
Yon. Grabe, no? Grabe kayo. Thank you so much, Tom, for that update from preaching to giving us updates. Pwede mag-artista. That's your Tom Villegas. So, yun. Thank you so much. And I hope you're encouraged with how the building project is going. Indeed, a lot of things are about to happen in this place and in the city. And to know more on how you can partner with us and how you can join in this initiative, uh, we're going to give the details a while ago, uh, in a while. But before that, allow me to pray a blessing, a prayer of blessing for each and every one of us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Shalom, nothing missing, nothing lacking this very day and for the rest of the week. In your mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining us on our online worship service. To view our previous services, our building project updates, and the rest of our online content, do subscribe to our YouTube channel, that's Victory Dumaguete. To listen to our podcast, you may follow our Spotify account, that's Victory Dumaguete Podcast. As you all know, we have now started our very own Victory Dumaguete building project. Now, to know more about this project and how you can be involved, you may join one of our project presentations every Saturday at 10 a.m. via Zoom. Now, if you happen to be a parent or you have kids at home and you want them to be involved in our building project, we have th this cans right here available at the office for them to take part and give their support to the building project. Again, thank you. We hope to see you soon and have a blessed week.